Today, I'm gonna show you my super simple platform bed build that turned my 2010 Honda CRV into a car camper. Hey, my name is Shay. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, All About Travel. I've been missing travel during the pandemic, and like a lot of you, I've been looking for unique and safe ways to travel that I've never really considered before. A big dream of mine is to own an RV and to travel that way, but considering the fact that I've never even camped before, I figured I should probably get a taste of that life before committing. So I'm starting smaller, much smaller. With my vast experience of building IKEA furniture under my belt, I had to watch a few dozen YouTube videos to even get a sense of where to start with a project like this. And I decided that it would be best to enlist the help of a professional, AKA my dad, who let's be serious, has a way more experience building things than I do, and has a garage full of power tools that made this project so much easier. We devised a plan to build this super simple platform bed inside of my car for my one week road trip around Lake Michigan. But now let's rewind and start at the beginning. The plan is to build the platform in two sections, section one being the trunk area and section two being the back seat area, which will include a hinged piece that can be deployed once I'm parked and my front seats are moved all the way forward. We started by building the trunk section. Since there's already a ledge built above my wheel wells, we decided to work with that as our base height for the platform. This was the first piece we built. By cutting down two by two and two by four pieces of wood and screwing them together, this became the first piece of the frame. Next came the legs. We cut a 14 inch section off of a half inch piece of plywood so that the height would match the wheel well ledge in my trunk. We then cut that piece in half and screwed the pieces to the outside of the frame. This fit in perfectly to the width of my trunk. To add stability to this piece, I added a corner brace to each inside corner. Or at least I tried to. After getting schooled by my dad, I finally got the hang of it. Hooray! Even an idiot can do this. Okay, hold the weight. Each car has a unique set of measurements and challenges to work around. For example, in my car, my spare tire is underneath the floor of my trunk, so we knew that the trunk section in my build had to be easily removed if need be. The next step was measuring and cutting down our plywood to sit on top of this frame. Since the door opening is narrower than the width of the trunk, we decided to use two pieces instead of one. These pieces span from the ledge of the wheel well and meet in the middle of the two by four. So we trim the edge around here. And we're gonna copy the same exact thing for this side, except we'll also have to do a cutout for the fuel on that side as well. We also rounded the edges of the plywood to match the curve of my trunk using a bandsaw. But if you don't have one of these, you could just as easily do a straight line cut across at an angle. The mattress is gonna cover this anyway. That marked out. And we'll cut that on the bandsaw. So that's gonna get cut out for that. Whoa, sweet, one piece done. So the next thing that we're gonna do is build this second piece that goes here behind the seats. Now I am gonna take my back seats out. You don't have to, it would definitely be possible to just create your piece from here that would go over here and then have your legs. I just don't need the back seats and I'd rather have the room for storage. The next step is to take out my back seats. Just YouTube your specific car model if you're looking at removing your back seats. Again, you do not have to remove your back seats. I just figured why keep them in there when it's only gonna be me and maybe one other person. I highly recommend keeping your plastic pieces and bolts sealed together in a Ziploc until after your trip. P.S. It's definitely easier to remove these seats than it is to put them back in. Those little plastic pieces are not the easiest to work with. The most predominant lesson I learned during this build is that you need to be willing to fly by the seat of your pants and figure out how to work with the unique challenges that your car brings to the equation. So we again cut down our 2 by 2s and made a frame for the back seat section of the car before figuring out how to attach the legs. I may replace these, but for now it'll at least locate the legs. So essentially we realized that we can use the holes that the bolts came out of that were holding the chairs. We just screwed something into the end of it just to make sure that it kind of doesn't buckle out from the bottom. So now what I'm gonna do is drill and put a three inch wood screw into that leg to hold it. Trying to be careful here because this might be wiring in there. That's why we didn't wanna do like another piece of plywood going that way. Again, you just, you have to work with what your car is giving you. So we had all these little divots in the floor where the chairs were. We decided to build the frame to fit our leg 
pieces in there just for some added stability. Fortunately, it didn't quite work out. We did have to add another piece of wood here in addition to the rest of the frame just so that this piece uh, could have something to drill into up top. But besides that, everything's working out pretty well. Again, just the biggest advice is to be flexible as you're building this stuff out. So you just trimmed up the end of that one so that it just, fit just a little bit more into it's, that. It's in the pocket a little bit better. Again, you don't have to use the pocket. We're just trying to kind of work with what the car has given us. It's a little bit hard to plan until you kind of get in there and start building, but I think we did it the right way by starting with piece number one there and then moving on to the back seat piece. The next thing that we're trying to figure out is how to connect the back piece to the front piece. We're gonna use these brackets so that this back piece just kind of drops into this. So we're gonna try to bend the end. This will be connected to the middle piece. Again, the whole reason that we're trying to do something like this instead of just connecting it all as one piece is because my spare tire is in the back. So we really wanna be able to take that back piece out easily if needed. Fingers crossed I don't need it, but it's good to plan ahead for that kind of stuff too. So now we've got it clamped in the vise and we're gonna bend that little corner, that excess material. We could also cut it off, but by bending it up, it'll just help keep it uh, a little bit stronger. And since all this is doing is just holding it front to back, if there's a little bit of play, it doesn't matter as long as it can drop in. Okay, so here's the final product. This is what it started out as, and then this is what we did. And then two holes were drilled down there, so that's gonna hold our two pieces together. So these brackets that we're bending right now are gonna have no purpose structurally. They're really just to keep this back piece and then the front piece together. You don't have to get fancy and use metal like this. You can actually just use zip ties. That was my original plan if this metal didn't work out. And then if I needed to get to my trunk, to get to my tire underneath, then I could just cut the zip ties, make sure I had a few spare in there. So again, it's really just to make sure that the two pieces stay together and don't separate when I'm driving down the road. All right, so that is the bracket that we just built and bent. Again, it's just holding this piece to the next piece because the back seat section and the trunk section are two separate pieces. As you can see, I also added corner braces literally everywhere because I just didn't want to fall down in the middle of the night. So corner braces are a good way to go to just add some structural stability. The next thing we were trying to figure out is if I needed a brace for support here. It doesn't fully need it, but also just to fit things underneath. We really like that there is not another post there right now. So my dad just came up with an ingenious idea. So what we're gonna do is obviously it'll be a full length piece, but it'll just slip in when you need it. So that'll cut the span down and provide vertical support for this end of it right here. Then you can take Slide it out. Slide it out when I need to put something in there. If you need bigger space or whatever. Plywood will just sit on top of that, keeping it in place. But now I have full access to under here. I don't have a leg that's gonna get in my way when I'm packing stuff in and out. Genius, Dad. Genius. I mean, if I wanted to sleep in the fetal position, this would be fine. Yeah. But we are gonna build another piece about my feet down here that's gonna hinge out. So the reason that this board only comes up to here is since we're gonna have a piano hinge going across, we wanted it to end on this piece so that the piano hinge would have some structural supports. So the last two things that we have to do are attach the piano hinge to my hinge piece in the front and then cut out legs. These plumbing caps to make the socket that's gonna get attached to the hinge piece and then this will be the leg. You just pop it right into the socket and hopefully it's super easy. This is just so it'll go in and out of the end cap more easily. resting on our support here. This piece and this piece are both evenly on this piece. Are we done? I think we're done. 
after having this in my car for a few days, I've learned a couple of things about these yoga mats. I've realized that with moving the extended piece that's on the piano hinge back and forth, but these are getting really misaligned. So today I'm actually just going to cut them down into sections and then just use a staple gun to staple them into place just so that they're not moving around as much. I've seen a lot of people do these sticky carpet tiles. I've seen people use moving blankets. There's a lot of different things that you can do here. I just happen to have a yoga mat already that I wasn't using. And I knew that you can get really cheap ones at like Marshall's, TJ Maxx. I got this one for $8 at TJ Maxx. Switched to this kind of staple gun over this kind because this one wasn't working and this seemed way more fun. So I'm not gonna be stapling down the back portion of these yoga mats. I really just wanna be able to easily remove that back portion in case I have to get to my spare tire. And I think that keeping at least part of it stapled down here will still do the trick. So I looked at a bunch of different options for covering up my windows, like curtains. WeatherTech makes this exact product that I'm about to make, but I decided to go the DIY route because I'm trying to be as cheap as possible. So I bought this roll of Reflectix and I'm gonna cut that with the scissors. My plan is to use this sticky back Velcro to just make it stick onto the window. So we'll see how this goes. Okay, so the really nice thing is once you get one window done, you can use this same template to do your opposite window. So for me, I only have to do three on each side of my car and then one for the back windshield. And then I'm gonna buy something for the front windshield. So the last thing that I need to do is stick on my little Velcro squares onto my window reflectors. One side will stay on the reflector and then the other will stay on the window. So definitely keep that in mind. You're gonna have something on your window if you choose to go this route with the Velcro. So it occurred to me as I was doing the little Velcro pieces on the back windows, these and the back rear gate, if I did that on my front window or even the passenger window, those stickies mean that you can't roll down your window all the way. So I'm definitely glad that I realized this now. I actually realized it because I bought this little bungee thing on Amazon, came in a two pack, super cheap. And it's actually so that I can roll this window down at night, a little crack and no bugs can get in. The Reflectix just literally fits in between this little mesh piece and the window and they stay right there. I cut this one to have a gap on top of it so that I can get some cross ventilation throughout the car overnight. My next piece of business is figuring out how to attach my last piece of Reflectix to my front windows. Got these little suction cup hooks on Amazon, came in a 12 pack for like five bucks. I figured I could just cut a little hole inside the Reflectix, put this up against the window, and then I can just take it down. So I'm just using a pair of scissors and literally just cutting, just punching a hole right through it. So yeah, that'll just hook through the little hole and then the suction cup will just hold it against the window. Fingers crossed this works. All right, let's try this out. That should do it. This is my solution for my front windshield. I didn't really want to make it out of the Reflectix just because it wouldn't be tall enough to fit my front windshield. So I didn't want to have to like tape this together in rows and I can continue to use this even when I'm not car camping. You can either have it metallic on the front or black on the back, depending on if you're trying to keep heat in or out. Oh, I did it, second try, this never happens. Oh, in case you're a dummy like me, they even have a video of how to fold this back up, but I just did it on my second try. I'm, I'm still... <laughs> you're not impressed. <laughs>
completed my trip, I can tell you that this actually worked out very well. It was surprisingly comfortable, even during the one night that my friend Carly had to bunk in here with me as well. We had plenty of storage for all of the things that we needed during the week, and I could actually see doing an even longer trip in this car. We stayed at campgrounds all week, so things like showering and cooking were really easy using the campground amenities. I'm gonna put a link to my blog post about this build down below so that you can see a list of all of the materials and measurements that I use for this build. But if you have any other questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section. And stay tuned for my next video where you can see my full road trip around Lake Michigan using this car camper. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.